from WJCT Studios in Jacksonville, Florida. I'm Ray Hollister. And I'm Tom Braun. And this is Deemable Tech, tech help worth listening to. This week's episode of the Deemable Tech Podcast is brought to you by A Small Orange Homegrown Hosting, a refreshingly different approach to web hosting, on the web at asmallorange.com. And by Audible.com. Deemable Tech listeners get a free audiobook download at audibletrial.com slash deemable. Over 100,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Got a question about your computer, smartphone, tablet, or the internet? Give us a call at 1-888-972-9868 or send us an email at questions at deemable.com. Today on Deemable Tech, we are answering your questions about replacing a laptop battery, finding a lost Blackberry, and... Angel's not here tonight. Angel's not here tonight. I am so sorry. Uh, if you follow us on Facebook or Twitter, I posted that Angel Torres from the uh, the Aurora app was supposed to be here tonight, and he's not here, and it's all my fault because I forgot to confirm that he was coming, so he assumed that it didn't go through. So I'm sorry if you were listening you know, to, to hear Angel. We think he's going to be on next week. Uh, it's not confirmed yet. I'm going to confirm it this time. So <laughs> we'll, you'll actually know, and I'll let him know. So sorry about that, Angel, if you're listening. I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. So that's it. Okay. Uh, well, let's take some questions. Um, uh, first, we actually have a live call, Ray. Really? Who from? Yeah, it's actually from your mom. Okay, seriously, Tom, that's not funny. And we've already done that joke before, too. Jeez. <laughs> no, no, it, it really is your mom. Like, she's waiting on hold. Oh, on the phone. Hey, oh, right now. Okay, cool. Oh, hey, mom, you're on Deemable Tech. What's your question? Hello. Yes, you're on. I'm starting a business. Well, I've actually started it, making jewelry, and necklaces, and earrings. Oh, cool. And I want to sell them online. Okay. Will you make me a website? No. Oh. <laughs> well, the reason why is, mom, even for you, uh, we don't do website development. I mean, I do and tom you you do some website development too at, at your work yeah not so much like graphic design part yeah but my so, websites look terrible so yeah so we don't really do website development um we try to not do services um but we do have a business directory on our website uh if you really want to do a website but uh so other than that i mean what would you what would you do well I don't know. If you can't make a website for me, what should I do? How can I sell them online? Well, um, honestly, I wouldn't, if you're going to be selling things online, um, I wouldn't start with a website. Uh, Because, honestly, it's kind of like being in the middle of the desert. You can set up a store, but nobody knows you're there. Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, websites are good to have once you're more established. Um, But honestly, I would start in a marketplace that has other businesses just like you would start a a lot of times when you start a small business you would start in like a a flea market or uh in a mall you know like a small kiosk in a mall Mm -hmm. um so there's a few options that i would i would check out um there's always you know like ebay and craigslist um, but also there's etsy and artfire um and there's a bunch of other etsy knockoffs um so just to to kind of compare the differences you know with craigslist it's free but the expectation is that you're only doing business locally, mm. so you have to meet people person person to person. So if that's not something that you'd want to do, then I'd probably stay away from Craigslist. Not yet. <laughs> yeah, and there's a lot of shady stuff that goes on on Craigslist, so yeah. you might want to stay out of that. Um, eBay, you know, you don't pay until you sell, uh, but it's kind of it's auction style, so it really drives the prices low. I've I've seen on eBay a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, It used to be, you know, back in the the early 2000s, I would see stuff go for crazy prices on eBay, even if it really shouldn't be for crazy prices. Uh, But it was like, oh boy, I'm buying online. I'll pay a lot of money. (laughs) Exactly. People don't think that way anymore. Yeah, now it's everybody goes to eBay for a really, really cheap deal Mm -hmm. uh, because it's really a buyer's market. But Etsy, that's where the buyers are. Uh, Etsy, of course, is a uh, an online market for home craft goods. Stuff that people make at home, um, like knitting stuff, jewelry, mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. So th- if I had to pick a site that I would say to go to, I would check out Etsy first. And I think especially for what you're doing, like if somebody said to me, I want to, you know, if my girlfriend said like, oh, I want to get, you know, a necklace online, I would say go to Etsy. 
Yeah. Um, that would be the first thing that popped into my head. Um, that's where people go for this kind of stuff. Yeah. And there's other sites that you can check out, um, but they, they all seem to be kind of Etsy knockoffs. Um, Artfire, though, is kind of uh, getting more steam. They're getting more more customers. I haven't been on Artfire. Yeah, I actually didn't hear about it until uh, just was recently looking. Um, now, I know that you want to have uh, your own domain name, your right. own URL. But what you can do is you can get a, a URL and you can direct it to your Etsy page. Oh, okay. So you could get like serenitynook.com. That's my name. I know. I forgot to mention that before. <laughs> but uh, you could get that and then direct it to your Etsy page, which if you set up your Etsy page with Serenity Nook, it'd be like something like etsy.com slash shop slash Serenity Nook. Oh, okay. So it, that way when – like if you were giving out business cards and it had serenitynook.com, which is nice and easy to remember. Mm-hmm they would go to the long, crazy address that Etsy gives you. Oh, and that, and that would go directly? We just forward through right. to it, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So okay. that way, for humans, you have a really simple, easy uh, address to go to, mm-hmm. uh, but it be still in be, would be in the Etsy directory. And importantly, people could also search for you on Etsy, because that's how people who don't yeah. know you are going to find you. They're going to be looking on Etsy for necklaces, earrings, and boom, hopefully yeah, you'll pop up. Even though, I mean, it, it definitely... Uh, kind of increases your credibility if you have your own website. Um, until you have the volume to be bringing in that traffic to sell things, it's better to be on a marketplace like Etsy because there are already people going to Etsy looking for stuff like what you buy. Mm-hmm. It, it'd be like if you could do consignment with Walmart. Like, yeah, there's tons of other products at Walmart, but there's tons of people that go to Walmart, so they're going to see your stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and actually, Mom, for you... All you have to do is set up your Etsy account and tell me where it's at because I will redirect the domain to your Etsy page. I'll I'll do that for you because you're my mom. And also because I just bought that domain for you. What? (laughs) Well, here was my thinking. Um, I figured if I said serenitynook.com on the show and somebody heard that, well, somebody might grab it. So I went and grabbed it for you. Oh, Okay. All you have to do is set up your Etsy account and l- tell me where it is, and I'll take care of it for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> so. All right. And that's a service we do not usually provide. No. <laughs> <laughs> we, okay. won't, we won't buy domains for most of our listeners. but. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much, and I'll talk to you later. All right. Thanks for your question. Thanks for calling. All right. Bye, Bye-bye. Mom. Aw. That was, that was fun. I like that. So that was our first caller, our yeah. first live caller on the show. we got to do more of those. Absolutely. I think we will, uh, as long as I can remember to confirm them <laughs> <laughs> to be on the show, unlike I did with Angel, um, mm-hmm. I'll, uh, we'll have some more live callers. So, Speaking of which, if someone has a question, what is the number that they call? They can call 1-888-972-9868. Or can they send an email? No. Oh. At we don't have email? We don't. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta, we got to work on that. Yeah, we need to get email. No, we do. It's uh, questions oh. at deanbowl.com. Very cool. All right, well. We got another question that was emailed in to us. Can you grab that? Okay. Dean asked, what's a good place to get a replacement battery for my Dell laptop? It's model number PP31L. Oh, okay. PP31L. Cool. Well, thanks for your email, Dean. Um, so I did a little research, and that is a Dell Studio 1735, or it could be a 1737. That model number went for both of those. Those always get me confused. It's weird how it has a model number and a model number. Yeah. I don't understand. <laughs> but... uh Generally, when honestly, I've never replaced a laptop battery. Have you ever replaced a laptop battery? No, I haven't. Um, I bought one a long time ago because I wanted like an extended life battery. Sure. So I got the more expensive version of it. Mm -hmm. But I bought that from the store I bought my laptop at. Yeah. So it's just I bought it with it. So I never thought about replacing the battery on my current laptop because the laptop's working very well, but the battery life has gotten very short. Yeah, and it, it seems like as much crap as they i can say that now that my mom's not on the show (laughs) she might still be listening um as much as uh trouble as people give apple for not being able to replace laptops they don't get replaced that often no it's true uh usually you know know, your battery's dead you just get a new laptop even Mm -hmm. if it is you can pop them out and it's because they tend to be kind of expensive they do Um, they they tend to be pretty pricey like uh, almost a fourth or sometimes half the price of a laptop. Yeah. It's insane. It could easily run you. I was 80 minimum yeah. up to 200 probably. Yeah, absolutely. So Dean, what I would do, uh, generally I would start with the manufacturer to kind of get a baseline price of what you should expect to pay. 
that's usually going to be the most expensive place you can find it. Just like if you're replacing a part on your car, check with the dealer, and that's you know that's the most expensive. Um, but then I would check out a couple of other sites for comparison shopping. Uh, I would check out Amazon, uh, Newegg. It's Newegg, like the word new and the word egg, dot com. Uh, Tiger Direct, uh, which is what used to be CompUSA. Now they're Tiger Direct. They got Tiger. No, they used to be Tiger Direct. Right, right. And they bought CompUSA. They bought CompUSA. But Thank they've you. been there for a long time. Right. And yeah. they're way better than CompUSA ever was, so don't be scared by that. That's true, yeah. If you didn't like CompUSA, <laughs> don't don't be scared. Tiger yeah. Direct is awesome. Um, at least for geeks. I, I think they went in a very geek direction with the store. Yeah. It's very... It's always been kind of for the... We're getting off track. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> Batteries Plus is another one that I would check. Uh, they are a great company for buying batteries from, and uh, they actually do have local stores too where you can go and check oh, them out. Really? Um, I did check out Dell's website, and they had two different batteries for that model. One was $110, the other one was $150. And obviously, the more expensive one was the better one that lasts longer, has more mm-hmm. capacity. Um, Online, I found them going for anywhere from forty to one hundred and twenty dollars. So, quite a wide uh, berth. Is that the word of options? Range. Range will work. Yeah, <laughs> berth doesn't work. B e r t h. I don't know. I'll contact Grammar Girl. Yeah, and find out. <laughs> Grammar Girl. Yeah. You never listen to Grammar Girl? No. Okay, well, we're going to plug Grammar Girl on the podcast. Uh, an amazing podcast to listen to. Short little, you know, five ten minute. Uh, episodes hmm. about funny, interesting grammar stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I'll check that check out. I like grammar, grammar girl because I'm a nerd. Search iTunes for Grammar Girl. After you search iTunes for Demon Tech and subscribe to our show if you and haven't Serenity done it already. Nook. And Serenity Nook. No, <laughs> she's not on iTunes. <laughs> she's not on iTunes. Oh no, I know. <laughs> okay, so um, going back to your question, Dean, if you want, if you just want to find the cheapest battery that you can find, uh, go to Google. Just go to Google.com. And type in Dell Studio 1735 or 1737, whichever it is, and battery. And so Dell Studio 1735 battery. And then when you hit search, look at the shopping results. Mm -hmm. That will give you a breakdown of pretty much every battery that's out there on the internet for the Dell Studio 1735 or 37. And then you can sort that by cheapest to most expensive, or if you want to, most expensive to cheapest, or most relevant, or any way you want to sort it. And you can look at all the options. Um, There's going to be a lot of companies that are overseas, a lot of companies that are maybe not the greatest quality, greatest customer service. And you want to keep that in mind. You want to keep in mind is the quality and the customer service of where you're shopping from. If you buy a battery from some website that, you know, is in some foreign country that has no customer service number, but you got a great cheap deal on the battery, you can expect that, you know, it's, you're probably not going to get any service if the battery breaks down a month after you buy it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, and then if you have to replace it twice, well, you just spent 100, uh, 120 bucks on it, you know, so Anyways, what's the yeah. point? Um, so sometimes it's worth buying something that's more expensive, um, but you know it's going to last, or at least if it doesn't last, they're going to replace it for you. Yeah, I was going to mention that earlier, too. Like, if I was in this situation, um, I would be real tempted to go with the manufacturer, even though they're more expensive. You yeah. actually know what you're getting, and it, A, you're getting the right part, right? and B, that it's going to work. And if it doesn't, they'll take it back. I'd say the best compromise, I mean, because Newegg and Tiger Direct and Batteries Plus, they all had pretty expensive prices, pretty comparable to the Dell prices. Mm-hmm. Uh, Amazon had good prices, buy some of those companies that otherwise I wouldn't be too hot on. Yeah. But because it's through Amazon, it's At reputable. Least, yeah. They're going to, they're going to support it. So yeah, you can leave feedback and that kind of thing. Yeah. Obviously on Amazon or, or any website, you want to check and see how long the warranty is and make sure that, you know, you have a substantial time that it's going to be covered for. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, start with Dell, check on Amazon, new egg, tiger direct batteries plus, and just check Google search uh, shopping and that'll give you, a pretty, pretty wide range Great. <laughs> of options yes, yes. to go wide with. Ra- good word. Good word, Joyce. I'll yeah. go with that one. I think Grammar Girl will approve. <laughs> hey, we've got another question. And by the we way, do. if you <clears throat> want to send us a question, you can always call us at one 972 9868 Or can, can they send us an email, Ray? We I do. We have email. It goes to questions at deemable.com. That's amazing. Or you can even just go to our website at deemable.com and click the ask a question button. That's true. I Fill think that's what it form. says. Is that what it says? Ask a question? Uh, I don't know. Maybe? I'm curious. It, it says, uh, 
yeah, ask a question. Look at that. There it is. I even know it's. I even know it's on our website. That's awesome. <laughs> That's unusual. <laughs> Uh, hey, we've got right, another, question? another question. Jennifer wrote in, I listened to your segment this morning on WJCT about protecting the yes. iPad and iPhone. Okay. I have a BlackBerry Bold 9900 and BlackBerry Bold 64 gigabyte tablet. So she has a no, phone playbook. and a tablet. Uh, BlackBerry Playbook. BlackBerry Playbook. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. I would like a recommendation for apps to protect, lock down, and secure the Bold and the Playbook tablet. Thanks for all your help. Well, first of all, uh, thanks for the email, Jennifer. And uh, second of all, sorry it took us so long to answer your email. Um, it looks like the, you emailed us back in April. Really? And yeah, I think our email, I think it may have eaten it. Um, huh. So I'm sorry, we must have misplaced your email or, or our email system ate it. Um, so again, sorry about that. Maybe give us a call, voicemail, 888-972-9868. <laughs> Um, so when I read your email, I had to go back and look at what segment you were talking about. Cause I don't remember protecting and locking down and securing an iPhone. I, I didn't remember what that was, but I found out it was the one about, uh, finding a lost iPhone, uh, where we talked about find mm-hmm. my iPhone. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately, BlackBerry does not have a built-in feature like find my iPhone until BlackBerry 10 came out. And that's the Q10 and the Z10 or the Z10, right. if you're not in America. Um, BlackBerry does make an app, though, that you can download for the BlackBerry Bold 9900 called BlackBerry Protect. Um, it's free. Uh, BlackBerry makes it. And it, it lets you do basically everything that Find My iPhone does. Uh, it will let you locate your BlackBerry, lock it, make it ring really loud, uh, put a message on the screen, and wipe it if you need to, like wipe the data off of your phone. Um, you can even back up your data from your BlackBerry remotely before you wipe it, which I thought that was cool because the iPhone doesn't do that. And I don't think Find My Find My Droid does that either. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, so it's kind of cool. You could back up all your contacts and all your stuff before you wipe it. So that was kind of fun. That's very cool, yeah. yeah. Now, uh, that now that was your, your bold 9900, um, which, Mom, if you're still listening, I think you have a bold, don't you? I don't know. I think you do. So you might want to check out that app. Um, Either way, you got a BlackBerry. I know that. So check out that app, uh, BlackBerry Protect. Um, But that's your BlackBerry Bold 9900. Now let's talk about your BlackBerry Playbook. Um, So you're the one that bought a Playbook? I was wondering who that was. Um, I was like, yeah, somebody has a BlackBerry tablet? Oh, my gosh. the, The one person. No, actually, I do know one other person that has bought a BlackBerry Playbook. Um. The BlackBerry Playbook is kind of an odd duck because it's the only device that runs the operating system that it runs. Ooh. It's the BlackBerry Playbook operating system. That's what it's called. So it's very catchy. creative with yeah. the name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, It's based off of QNX. I know you don't care. Um, <laughs> but and, and the problem is when BlackBerry puts out a new tablet, whenever that is, they're probably not going to use that version of the operating system either, which means... Any apps for the playbook won't work on future tablets, mm-hmm. and there's no apps for the phones that work on the tablet. And cause, cause they're probably just going to use BlackBerry 10. That's so what, a poor selling tablet with its own custom operating system. Yeah, probably not a lot of apps out there for. There's it. not a lot of apps for it, and then also the BlackBerry Protect does not work on mm. the playbook, uh, along with a, a lot of other things that didn't work on the playbook uh, when it came out of the gate. Um, even though BlackBerry Protect for p- people who have BlackBerry 10 devices, it's built in. Mm-hmm. It's just built into the Q10 and the Z10 or yeah. Z10. Um, but unfortunately, I couldn't find anything for the BlackBerry Playbook that even remotely did what we were talking about. Actually, I was checking out crackberry.com and all I could find was people complaining about the fact that they couldn't find apps that did this. So unfortunately for your, pl- for your Playbook, I don't have good news. But for your 9900, check out BlackBerry Protect. You know, it's not a question um, that we're doing today, but I have seen, uh, man, it seems like a couple of questions come come through that are related to this. There's a lot of people that go out there and buy $99 tablets that are kind of no name. Yeah. Uh, as a cheapskate, I support you in this, but I hate to say it, it's not a good idea. Mm-mm. Do not buy bottom-of-the-barrel electronics, especially not computers and tablets. Every you time you get what you pay for. Yeah, every time I see a uh, uh, 99, it's always that $99 mm-hmm. range. That's, like that's the yeah, red flag. <laughs> that's when I'm going to, you know, the, well, that, as a consumer, that's like, oh, it's under 100 bucks. I right, can get it. Right. 
Um, but as a tech minded person, I'm always like, no, it's going to be horrible. Yeah. I always want to put up like warning signs. Please don't buy this. You'll hate it. Right. It's going to make you miserable. I mean, in this, in this case, like it's, you know, the Blackberry playbook, it's a tablet, but you know, it was a one-time operating system sold yeah. poorly. It's probably got zero support. But it wasn't $99. No, it oh. was, it was more than $99 when it came out. But, but I, I can see how that did. makes sense if you have a BlackBerry and you're like, oh, BlackBerry oh, sure. has a tablet. Yeah, I mean, it was you know, it was designed. You? It looked exactly like WebOS. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, of course, I thought it was beautiful. Uh, <laughs> anybody who listens to the show knows I'm a, a WebOS fanboy. The only one. <laughs> the only one I left, hear. yeah. Um, but, no, I mean, it was really, it was gorgeous. It just, it didn't have a lot of features. It couldn't, yeah. it couldn't do, like, basic things like email mm-hmm. by itself. Really? You had to connect it to a BlackBerry to use email. That's bad. Yeah, so they just rushed it to market. Yeah, and, you know, they were just trying to be make an iPad killer, and mm-hmm. yeah. But I mean, even yeah. like uh, now, the good news is now most of the cheap tablets are running Android, so at least they're running something that yeah. has support. That's true. But even so, it's not going to be a good tablet experience. You think you're, you know, all tablets are not created equal. If you're paying ninety nine dollars for it. It's probably not a very good tablet, That's you true. know, and you're going to have problems with it. And so it's just one of those things where I'd say, you know, buy the tablet that all your friends are buying because it does sound terrible, but it really is. I yeah, mean, it's like, uh, you know, it's it's going to be better supported if it's popular. Yeah. That's really the number one thing. It's going to have apps that work. It's going to be better supported. Um, it's going to get software updates more frequently. And the biggest thing is, especially with Android, um, when you buy a device that isn't the 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 flagship devices, yeah. you know, the, the really the mm-hmm. top end models, you're not going to get the latest version of Android. Right. You're going to get one that's three or four generations back. And that means that all of the newer apps are not going to run on it. Mm-hmm. And it's going to run slow because it yeah. can't run the newer hard or newer operating system because it's on older hardware. I'd say the speed's more of a problem. Like yeah. most apps aren't so specific that they need you to be on sure. 4.3 or something. Yeah. But um, definitely you're going to find that Angry Birds will run fine, I'm sure, but you know, <laughs> Temple Run may not be as good. Right. Yeah. So that uh, that is frustrating. Um, you know, you do you do get what you pay for. We got any other uh, questions? We I think hit? we got one more. Okay. You wanna you wanna tackle it? Uh, Why don't you read it? Because I don't know what it is. <laughs> oh, it's Kevin's question. Kevin, remember? You don't remember? I don't know. No. No. Oh, okay. Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> you got Kevin. it. Yeah, I'm bringing it up. <laughs> Okay, uh, let me read this. Okay. When my mouse starts moving. Okay. Uh, Kevin writes, I used to have a link to my email on my desktop, but somehow it got deleted. Now I search for my email from MSN. My son says I'm doing things the long way. To be honest, Mm. I don't know much about the web, and I get a little bit overwhelmed every time I open Internet Explorer. Any advice? Okay, deep breaths, Kevin. It's going to be okay. We're here to help. <laughs> That's right. And you're definitely not alone here. There's plenty of people. I talk to them all the time that open up their browser and just are confused and can't figure out how to get from point A to point B. Because yeah. when you open an Internet Explorer, for starters, depending widely on which version you're running, because they change the interface dramatically every sure. single time, um, you may see up to three different fields where you can type things that might or might not be web addresses. Uh, so you know you want to go to a specific website, but... Where do you type it in and, you know, right. what do you type? And ironically, we were just talking about this with my mom. Mm-hmm. Um, what you want to do is type the URI into the address bar. Um, I should probably explain what a URI is first. Yeah. URI means uni- Uniform Resource Indicator. Basically, it's just the formal name for a web address. Like www.google.com is a URI deemable.com is a URI. Right. Facebook.com is also a URI. But wait, I've always called them URLs. So have I. Um, URLs are just a slightly older way to refer to URIs. URL means uniform resource locator. Okay. Either way, they usually look like www.thenameofthewebsite.com or net or whatever. Um, now, here's the secret. 99% of the time, you can leave off the www. You don't right. have to type it. Um, www.google.com, you know, it's kind of redundant. You can just type in google.com, and your browser will actually kind of fill in the blanks. It'll figure out that, you know, there should be a www on the front. And the place that you want to type this is not the search bar of the website that is your homepage, like MSN right. or whatever it is, Yahoo, Google. Um, that will search for the name 
So if, if you were on MSN and you type in the search bar www.google.com, that will actually do a Bing search for google.com. Right. Um, which will hopefully take you to Google because the first result will probably be Google. Um, but A, that's not guaranteed, which we were just talking yeah. about. Um, <laughs> we were talking about that before the show, yeah. Yeah, there was actually a situation where uh, Facebook, of course, everybody knows Facebook. Uh, some website did something about how to log into Facebook, and it became the top hit for Facebook. Yeah. And all of a sudden, people couldn't get to Facebook because they were going to this website about how to log into Facebook. And they were leaving and comments itself. going, this isn't Facebook. And it was Read White, Read Write Web did, okay. a, did the story about and they were, it. they weren't trying to fool anybody. No. They yeah, were just they doing were, an article yeah. about it. And they were getting tons of comments on it going, this isn't Facebook. Why? You're a scam. And like, they're not, why yeah. are people commenting? And they found out that it was because they were the first link that came up when you typed in Facebook. Yeah. If you uh, search for Facebook, you might get the wrong website. Could Probably happen. Not, but it could happen. If you put Facebook.com into your address bar, you will not get the wrong website unless something's gone horribly wrong with the internet. Right. Now, um, let's see. Where were we? Okay, so yeah, so you want to type the address or the URI into the address bar, which is above the web page. It's the white bar at the top, generally, and almost and it all usually browsers. usually has HTTP colon Filled in forward already. slash forward slash, yeah. Yeah, and going back to something you were saying, you, you can drop the www. A lot of websites, their, their website does not start with www. Mm -hmm. For instance, dmobile.com does not start with www. Yeah. Not only do you not have to type it in, it's not actually our address. Um, it will take you, if yeah. you type in www.demable.com, it'll take you to demable.com. Mm -hmm. um, but there are some sites where if you type in the www, it will take you in, to a different website. Hmm. So always want to make sure that you type in the actual website that they tell you. Right. Before someone tells and you. And any kind of major website, they're going to own both the www yeah. and the without www version. So. Right. L just like we do. Like yeah. we have both, but it just redirects to demable.com. Um, and you can identify it because, like he said, it usually has uh, HTTP or HTTPS followed by a colon and two forward slashes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, instantly, you don't need to... Okay, we talked about it. Yeah. Um, well, you don't have to enter in the HTTP right. either. No, uh, you don't. It's, uh, all modern web browsers already know that and fill it in yeah. for you. And in, case, in case you're really curious, and I know you're not, but it stands for Hypertext Transport Protocol. And if you're on the web, you're using that protocol whether you like to or not. So it is really redundant, and you don't need to worry about it. Yeah. Now, there are a couple of wrinkles that you need to be aware of. Um, on some browsers, you'll see that there are two fields at the top. Yes. Um, there's, it's usually square. That's your address bar or mm -hmm. square corners. And on the right, usually, there'll be a rounded circular yeah. Often with a little magnifying bar. glass icon or yeah. something. Or it'll say that's, search. Right. And that's your search uh Field. Right, and that will do the same thing as going to MSN or Bing and right. looking for www.google.com. It will actually do a search for it. Again, it won't take you directly to the address. Right. Now, to throw a monkey wrench in the works, if you're using Chrome, mm -hmm. your address bar is your search bar. Yes. It's called an omnibar. Yes, and that's true uh, really on Facebook, and I even think the newest version of Internet Explorer is now doing that. Yeah, there are a lot of them doing it, so it makes life easier. But So they try and be intelligent and if you type in something with a .com on the end, it assumes that it's you know a web address. And if you right. just type in what is the Facebook, it does a search for that. All right. So let's see. What else do we need to tell them about? Okay. So let me summarize this real quick. Okay. So step one is you want to find the address bar above the web page that is your home page. Right. Even though that page may have a search bar, that's not what you want to type the address in. If unless you want you're to searching for something. Yes. Unless, unless you're that's searching fine. for something. That's fine. Um, two, once you've found that uh, address field, type the URL. You mean URI. I mean the URI. <laughs> right. Uh, type the URI into the address bar, and you can put an HTTP and a www at the beginning, but it's not necessary. Hit enter, and you should be directed straight to the website that you typed in. And once you're there, don't forget that you can actually bookmark websites that you use frequently. There's usually a little star icon up on at the top of your browser somewhere. So find that and click it, and it will bring up uh, your bookmarks. And you can add your email website to the, your list of favorite websites. And once you do that, you won't have to type anything. Once you bring up your browser, you can just open your bookmarks and your email to click away. Yep. And you know what? I This is kind of relevant to us because we found out. Uh, I was looking at our analytics on our website that show us you know, how people got to our website, mm -hmm. like what search terms they search for, whatever. And we had a morning edition segment a little while ago where we told people to go to demobile.com dot com slash java yeah and 
I looked at our search analytics and it showed that a lot of people had searched Google for deemable.com slash Java. Oh, wow, yeah. So I realized, hey, people aren't, maybe we need to talk about this. Yeah. So, yeah. and ironically, we got a question about it. So mm-hmm. that was good timing. So Kevin, you're not alone. You're no, not the only person not. who does this. Uh, and listeners, if, you, if you're realizing that you do this all the time, you're in good company. <laughs> a lot of people do it. So, but now you know. And now knowing you know. is half the battle. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was thinking the the NBC the more you know no you went with GI Joe GI okay. Joe all right Heck yeah awesome <laughs> well Tom do we have any more questions that we've answered because we have a lot of questions we do have a lot of questions I don't think we've answered any more we have not answered any more questions that's unfortunate but if you want to send us a question you can do that it's one eight 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 nine seven two nine eight six eight or you can send us an email at questions at deemable.com and if you haven't done so already please subscribe to the show yes uh, search for us deemable tech on itunes or you can point your favorite podcast app to dmbl.co slash pod or, or you can search for deemable tech on on you i can never say this right youtube not youtunes <laughs> i said youtunes last week i almost did it this week <laughs> Uh, ah, excuse me, sir. Can you tell me how to get to the YouTube? Where's the YouTube? Where's the YouTube? There's no such thing as YouTube's. But there probably is now. Someone's grabbed it. <laughs> All right, then there's our theme music. Our producer is Sean Birch. Thanks to Robert Snyder for video production assistance and to Joel Snyder for helping us out with the phones. I'm Ray Hollister. I'm Tom Braun. And this is Deemable Tech. Thanks for listening and have a great week. <laughs>